on you. Respond to our prayers. O oh Allah, we have no power or might but with you. Your command concerning us prevails, and your decision concerning us is just. We call upon you by every one of your beautiful names with which you have described yourself, or which you have revealed in your books, or you have taught any of your creatures, or which you have chosen to keep in the knowledge of the unseen with you, to remove and take away any disease, any virus, any sickness, this global pandemic we call COVID-19 from us. O Allah, help us in our measures to stem the spread of infection, help and heal the infected and the sick. O Allah, protect our vulnerable population. Give us the necessary caution to keep us unwittingly spreading this disease. Inspire to help each other during, during these hard times. O Allah, continue to bless leadership of our, of our country with wisdom and understanding to respond well to the state of our affairs. Help them as they work hard to allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. For those leading the charge to understand the disease, O oh Allah, give them knowledge and wisdom so that they come with solutions and medications to deal with the disease. O oh Allah, remove our sadness, dispel our anxiety and panic. Aid us to implement the recommended strategies in abstaining ourselves from the disease. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm Al-Deen. Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqeem. Surat Al-Lazina An-Na'amta Alayhim. Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim. Wal-Dwalleen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imam. I now have uh, the singular honor and privilege to invite the Vice President to make his welcome remarks. Vice President, please. <clears throat> Your Eminence, Sheikh Osman Nuhu Sharbatu, National Chief Imam. Eminent Imams, representatives of the various Islamic sects, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission, Tijaniya, Shia, Al Sunnah, Wal Jamaa, Ulama, and members of the Council of Zungo Chiefs, the Presidential Advisor on COVID-19 and the Presidential Advisor on Health. Our Minority Leader and Members of Parliament, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ghanaians, I greet you. Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. On behalf of His Excellency the President, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. I warmly welcome you all to the seat of government, the Jubilee House, this morning for this very important meeting and prayer meeting. Your Eminence, the reason for our meeting this morning with the Muslim leadership of Ghana is about the global pandemic brought by the deadly COVID-19 virus, commonly known as the coronavirus. Yesterday, His Excellency the President, Nana Kufuado, met with Christian leaders on the same subject. And this meeting is a continuation of the government's interactions with religious leaders of our country. In the past few weeks, the coronavirus has ravaged many countries, and the World Health Organization has declared it as a global pandemic. 
Indeed, it is a global pandemic, considering the rapid manner in which the virus is spreading across nations and the number of casualties. According to the World Health Organization, there have been over 180,000 infections and over 7,000 deaths globally. In Ghana, there have been 11 confirmed cases as at yesterday, Thursday, March 19th. Throughout the world, and recent, recently on the African continent, there continue to be daily, a daily upsurge in the number of confirmed cases. As more and more people get tested, we find more and more cases. Your eminence, even though Ghana is one of the least hit countries in the world, the government has taken swift and decisive preventative measures to curb the spread of the virus in the country. Prior to Ghana's first confirmed case, prior to that, the government announced the immediate suspension of international travels by public officials. On March 11th, the President Nana Kufuado delivered his first address to the nation on the coronavirus and announced measures, including government's plans and preparedness to combat the coronavirus should our country experience it. After two weeks, after the first two cases of the coronavirus in Ghana were confirmed, the president again addressed the nation on Sunday, March 15th. During the address, the president announced more drastic measures, which included tightening of all ports of entry, designation of quarantine, isolation, and treatment centers, as well as closure of all schools and suspension of all public gatherings, including services at churches and mosques for the next four weeks. Subsequent to the President's second address to the nation, the government issued a travel advisory which banned nationals of heavily affected countries from entering our jurisdiction and also discouraged Ghanaian citizens from traveling to these countries. Our port authorities have since denied many nationals of these countries entry into our country. One of the most striking government directives was the suspension of religious activities in churches and mosques. For us as Muslims, our daily congregational prayers and weekly Juma prayers would have, would have to be put on hold as the nation battles the spread of the dangerous virus. Just a day after the president's directive, the national chief imam held a press conference and urged Ghanaian Muslims to strictly adhere to the government's directive. Also, the national chief imam, in conjunction with the leadership of the various Islamic sects in the country, issued a press release suspending all congregational prayers and functions, including Juma, until further notice. In compliance with these directives by, Mus by the Muslim leadership, many leading mosques in the country have also issued statements to their congregants announcing suspension of congregational prayers. Your Eminence, the President and the government sincerely appreciate the cooperation of the Muslim leadership towards our collective effort to protect our country and citizens from the deadly threat of COVID-19. The decision to suspend services in churches and mosques was drastic but a necessary measure to safeguard our health so that we can get back stronger and worship our Lord, inshallah. As you already know, eminent imams, this decision and the advice to restrict movements under the difficult situation we find ourselves in 
are well grounded in Islamic principles. Even before the advent of science, our beloved prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is quoted to have said in the Hadith that, and I quote, if you hear of an outbreak of a plague in a land, do not enter it. That's what the prophet said. If you hear of the outbreak of a plague in a land, do not enter it. But if the plague breaks out in a place while you are in it, do not leave that place. End quote. This profound statement, made many centuries ago by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is what our scientists and health professionals have advised us to do now in the midst of the outbreak of this global pandemic. As the National Chief Imam told us during his press conference on Monday, Islam is a religion of flexibility, which allows us to tilt with our normal practices in certain extreme situations where health, life, and safety of humanity are concerned. Your eminence and fellow Muslims, we are not alone in this unprecedented situation. Many countries around the world have taken similar preventative measures, measures of suspending daily congregational and Juma prayers to help curb the spread of the virus. Countries such as Turkey, Egypt, Kuwait, Iran, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and so on, have all ordered the suspension of congregational prayers in mosques. Saudi Arabia in particular has suspended Umrah and is allowing controlled prayers only at the well-guarded two holy mosques in Mecca and Medina. The threat of the coronavirus is real and the suspension of congregational prayers are serious steps taken by Ghana and all these countries to protect people. During this temporary period of not being able to converge at mosques for the prayers and also listen to the weekly Friday khutbah, I would like to suggest an innovative way of delivering weekly sermons through social media to homes in the country by imams and mosques which have the capacity to do so. I'm happy that the Ghana Police Mosque has announced its intention to deliver live Friday sermons through Facebook to its congregants and Muslims in general during this temporary suspension of congregational prayers. The khutbah is a most important aspect of our Juma prayers and a real source of weekly inspiration to Muslims. So I would like to encourage imams and mosques across the country to consider this online innovation. While we observe our daily prayers at home and supplicate to Allah to save us from the coronavirus, it is essential we continue to strictly observe the preventive measures that have been announced to help keep everyone safe, covering our mouths when coughing and sneezing, as well as washing our hands regularly with soap and the running water are some of the preventive steps we should continuously adhere to. It is also important for all Muslims to thoroughly wash our hands with soap and the running water to ensure our hands are clean before we start ablution. As the government continues to take bold steps to curb the spread, and the citizens are encouraged to strictly observe these preventive measures to protect us from contracting and further spreading the virus, inshallah, I wish to urge our eminent imams to continue to pray for our dear nation, Ghana, and the world. We have unwavering belief in the almighty Allah, 
that he has what it takes to save us and the word from and the world from this affliction as Allah himself says in the Holy Quran chapter 6 verse 17 and if Allah should touch you with adversity there is no remover of it except him and if he touches you with good then he is over all things competent, end quote. So it is to Allah that we turn in this time of adversity. There is no other but him. Some will ask, why are you resorting to prayer as a government? Indeed, the circumstances surrounding the revelation of one of the most important Surahs in the Quran, Surah to a class, was when the non believers asked the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he, they asked him about God. Describe your God to us, they said. In reply, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, recited this surah. This surah, Surah to a class, serves as the identity card of God. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kul wallahu ahad Allahu samad lam yulid wa lam yular wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. That is one of the shortest verses in the Quran, but one of the most powerful. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Say, he is Allah the one. Allah the eternally besought of all. He begetteth, begetteth not, not, nor has begotten, and there is none comparable unto him. It is a short verse, as he said, but we are told that its power is equivalent to one third of the Quran, one third of the whole Quran, one third of the Injil, which is the Bible. The one third of the Torah, which was given to Moses. Very, very important. That is, he is one and has no substitute. No, he has neither similitude or equal. He has limbs, no limbs or parts. Lao Samad, he's impenetrable, indestructible, unchangeable. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, he is the creator of all things, of all beings. His work is not reproduction or reproducing himself. It is instead bringing something into being from non-being. Walam yakun lahu kufuan ahad. He has no equal in being. Perfection and action. He is one and no one is similar to him. He is the one and only. Ya Allah. It is indeed, it is you we worship and it is you we ask for help. In this time of the corona, coronavirus, this is why we are turning to Allah. And this is why we are having this prayer meeting today because we know that Allah can help us, relieve us from this adversity. May the Almighty Allah have mercy on us and save us from this coronavirus malady. Thank you, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. <coughs>
Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Al Hajj Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Your Eminence, the National Chief Imam, Your Eminence, the heads of the various sects here in present, respected members of parliament, senior staff of government, the media. I want to begin by greeting you all with Islamic greetings of love, peace, and fraternity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Indeed, in the prayers that has already been said and in the opening remarks of His Excellency the Vice President, the tone has been set for this the brief sermon I have been asked to present. The coronavirus is spreading across the world without any respect for geographical boundaries. The whole of the world has virtually come under siege. And under the circumstance, nations that pride themselves with the most advanced and excellent scientific and technological advancements have virtually been brought to their knees. What does this tell us? And Ghana has also had its fair share of the spread. From the beginning, we thought, like some people have said, God, Allah, is a Ghanaian. And so therefore, we shall be spared of this. So from zero, we registered the first two. From the first two, in my estimation, I thought that just by simple mathematical consideration, we should go to four before. But we jumped from two to six. What it meant to me was that the spread, the rate of spread was getting exponential. From six, we got to seven. And by the time we are taking the next speech by the president, His Excellency, we are talking about nine. And then we have now been told the next two have added and we are at 11. From 11, where do we get to? So in this state of anxiety and worry and fear about a disease that is threatening, that is threatening our existential survival in the world, and science is at its wit's end, now we have come to realization that there is a certain power that we must all bow down to. And that is why I think it's apt that the choice for the theme for this meeting this morning is excellent and well thought through. And we found no text to use except from the Quran chapter 1, verse 5, which His Excellency the Vice President excellently and eloquently remarked on. Lord, you alone do we worship. And for those of you who understand Arabic, you can understand why the prefix Iyaka was used. Iyaka na'abud wa Iyaka nasta'in. It could have been na'abuduka. We worship you. But the prefix, the expression with Iyaka na'abud is to emphasize that in this particular circumstance, you alone, so we exclusively distinguish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our worship. Before him, we make a declaration. We make a declaration, an acknowledgement of his absolute lordship and control of our affairs. And indeed, transcendental as he is, in his control of our affairs, he is immanent to us. In his immanence, we experience him in the world of man through his beneficence and his munificence. And that's why we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
يفعل ما يشاء بقدرته ويحكم ما يشاء بعزته he does what he wills with his power and he determines whatever he wills with his might and he has power over everything in our lives and because of these attributes that he is most deserving of our obeisance and that's why we make a declaration of our loyalty to him when every day in our son of Fatiha we say iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in we come to him with our obeisance declaring our helplessness and declaring our complete nothingness as we declare his magnificence in the power that he used to control the world. But even beyond that is to say also that we also come to him when in a very manifest manner our helplessness has been made so clear. Indeed, we have been stripped naked and our helplessness has become very glaring. Nations have had to come to their forehead in order to say prayers, seeking comfort, seeking refuge, and seeking solace, and seeking help and support from him, as it has become clear to us that on our own, we are unable to curtail the spread of this disease. And that's why we come again and say, wa iyaka nasta'in. We also say so because we want to declare the absolute dependability of Allah. It's one of his excellent attributes, excellently and eloquently also made by His Excellency the Vice President when he recited Surah Al-Ikhlas. Allah is one and the only, and as Samad, he is the besought of all. The resort to him alone we all resort to at the time when we feel threatened and there is no refuge for any one of us. We take cover under his power. And for us to say we want his help from him means that we believe his absolute dependability is dependable. Dependable in an absolute sense. If you permit me, Your, Your Excellency, then I say that is why I understand why the accounts call him Nyankupan. Nyankopong, Chirdiampong, Nyankopong. The tree so strong that when you lean on him never falls. There is a sense in the belief, traditional belief of the accounts when they say so. And it matches very well with our belief. Hence we come to Allah again and we say, we have hope even in this state. We have hope in Allah that he tells us that was at and my compassion encompasses everything. And that is what gives us the hope. And indeed, he has also told us, as the Imam gave us the opening prayer, when my servants call, tell, tell my servants that whenever they call on me, tell them I respond to the call of the supplicant anytime he supplicates or beseech me because I am near. And that is why I established that the immanence, though transcendent, but it's also immanent to us. And through his immanence, he come to the world of experience of man, that if we truly obey him and show that he is truly our Lord, he will listen to us and will do for us what we request for. That's why for that's why he said that. So therefore, let them also respond to my call. Let them also respond to my call. Well, you minubi and let them believe in me. Allah me shudun. For adventure, they will be well guided. Let me end up. The scenario of two great prophets. Just, just a brief. So that we can relate our present circumstance in Ghana, across Africa, in the world, that that circumstance that happened to a prophet has also happened to us. And when he made an open declaration of God's power and relied on him. God absolved and saved him. And that is Yunus alayhi salam. When he has turned away from duty, was unknown is Zahabu Mughadiban. When he turned away from duty and he thought that Allah will not do anything about him, 
He was made to fall into the sea where he was swallowed by a whale. Now he realized the power of Allah, and so therefore being disobedient at one time, similarly, uh, virtually, now he now made an open declaration for neither of his zulumat, and therefore he openly called unto Allah in the darkness of the sea, the darkness of the night, and the darkness of the rainy night. And la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min zalimin there is no deity worthy of obeisance and worship by man except you alone, and indeed I am among those who have wronged themselves. Meaning that I come to you as a humble servant, wanting you. So therefore, we responded to his call. We responded to his call. Why are you? So is Job also. He called unto his Lord, My Lord, I have been afflicted. I am afflicted with sickness to the point that I'm unable to worship you as I desire. And in this in similar way, and we took away from him the affliction, and we brought to him what he has lost of his family and the like. And so do we give, bring our, our compassion as an experience to those who are devoted to us, as Allah said in the Holy Quran. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he traveled from Taif, felt so dejected because he was rejected by the people. Indeed, he was stoned by young people, hoodlums were up to stone him, and he bled. He bled throughout his body. Before you, I put my complaint of my frailty and my lack of resources and the limitness of my, the, the, limit, the limits of my wisdom. Ya Arhamar Rahimin, oh, the most merciful among all merciful ones. To whom do you now give my affairs? To an enemy who looks at me askance or grimaces at me for, for, for evil, or for an enemy also that you leave him to also deal with me. I say that, oh Allah, if indeed you are not angry with me, I have no worry. But at the brightness of the countenance of your face in which that I have hope, so therefore, there is no resource and there is no power except in you. That is the prayer. So in this particular sense, as we call on Allah and say, we have these models in history in time past that submitted themselves to the will of Allah and declared their, their weakness. And as they did so, Allah answered them. And that is why we, as Muslims in this country, have also found it necessary. We are grateful to His Excellency the President and the Vice President for thinking the wise decision to call us in a very manifest manner. We are not hiding, but come and, and declare our powerlessness in front of the powerful power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cry on him that he will now save us from what is afflicting us in our country. I want to end it up here and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to us as we take the prayers from the various heads of our community. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Sheikh. We now have the prayer against the spread of the coronavirus pandemic in Ghana by the Amir and missionary in charge of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission of Ghana, Mulevi Saleh Amir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Most gracious, ever merciful Lord of all the worlds, we remember that you have given us the assurance in your holy book, in your own way, that La Taknatu bi Rahmatullah, that do not, under any circumstances, despise of the mercy of Allah. Today, gracious, ever merciful Lord of all the worlds, we are a distressed people. We are a distressed nation. We are under the siege of a devastating virus which threatens 
to wipe off the entirety of our nation and indeed the world from existence. <laughs> Under the circumstances, therefore, we remember your assurance to us that we should not despise of your mercy. Today, therefore, most gracious, ever merciful Lord of all the world, we humbly realize the fact that we have come to a stage when nothing can stand us any good stead apart from your mercy. And therefore, under this distress, we call upon you and remind you of your promise to us that we need your mercy. We've never needed your mercy ever than we need it today. And we have the trust that you would have mercy upon us. You did tell us in your own holy book, in your own words, that whenever my servants find themselves in a situation of distress, and they ask to know whether there is anyone anywhere out there who can be useful to them. Tell them that I am close by. I am a part and parcel of you. And whenever and at any given time that any of my despised, my despised, dejected, and afflicted servants have called upon me, Ujibu Da'awata Da'i, I've always responded favorably to such distress calls. Therefore, I call upon you not to lose faith, not to believe and depend on the support from any source. See me as your support base and hearken unto me whenever you are distressed. Well, you me no be. And I call upon you to believe in me not just believing in me as your Lord, your creator, the master of the universe, but to also believe in my capacities that yes, I have what it takes to save you from this cage, this cage of a virus at a time when we are helpless, but not the least ever despise of your mercy. And we collectively cry and pray you to save us from the scourge of this devastating virus. Gracious God and Lord of all the worlds, you have done it before. You have done it severally. Who is it? that saved the children of Israel from the atrocities of the Pharaoh. That was their time of distress. None could save them. It was you who saved them, Allah. It was you who saved Hazrat Musa salam, from drowning in the sea when he was pursued by enemy forces. At the time you raised your prophet, Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and under severe persecution, with your divine permission, he had to migrate from Mecca to Medina with his very trusted companion, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. After a long walk, 
They sought refuge in a cave to have a little rest. Pursued by the enemy, right up to the mouth of the cave, the enemy felt that Muhammad is either in this cave or we must gone up high into the skies. And our exercise, therefore, is a futile one. But in the cage, what saved the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasalam, and his companion from destruction was just an ordinary web of a spider, which, when observed by the enemy, felt it was impossible for anybody to be in this cave while the web of the spider covers the mouth of this cave. That was a moment of distress. Ya Allah, who saved your servant, Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It was you who did it. At a time of distress, when Muslims were overcome, when Muslim were overcome with grief, hardships, and they faced unbearable circumstances. They cried out loud from the depth of their hearts, Mata Nasrullah, O oh Allah, you promise us your help. But in the midst of that promise, this is what we are going through. Mata Nasrullah, when will that help of Allah come? Allah, you showed us. You did it. You indeed granted that help because of that distressful call from your servants. And you granted them entry into Makkah without shedding of a single drop of blood. Most gracious, ever merciful Lord of all the worlds, you saved Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam when his brothers tried to destroy him and eliminate him completely from the surface of the earth. His father had firm faith in the protective hands of the Almighty Allah, and that is you. Because of that faith, he felt he always smelt the fragrance of Hazrat Yusuf, which gave him the idea and the conviction that yes, indeed, his son is not dead. He is under the protective hands of the Almighty Allah. Yes, Allah, you did it. And at the end of the day, Hazrat Yusuf became a sovereign, received his father, as well as his brothers. Ya Allah, today we are before you in prostration on our knees representing each and every living being in this country and the world at large. Praying and asking for your mercy. We're not asking more than you have granted us to ask we're just asking only that which you have permitted us to ask you. And today, therefore, we ask for your mercy. We believe you are merciful. You have demonstrated it severally. Today, we need that mercy in Madagana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rahmani Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Thank you very much. Now we have the prayer for frontline health workers in the fight against the pandemic. Ahlus Sunnah National Imam Sheikh Ibrahim Omar. 
please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we thank him and thank him. We thank him from all our sins and our sins. Who is the one 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 who is the one. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت ورحمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم استرنا بسترك جميل اللهم استرنا بسترك جميل أمو يحوسك ويحقوني كي جي يمونا وانك مزيف Zee gea ma dama wazo kumwe kukaliye gea masa Ya na shesa mkichewa kumkodo wa loka si Mwenemi ili mima ya ya Ili minkasa Babu shaka Wanna mbala idizo ma alu umma an nabi muhamma Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alla yari gaya ba mulabari Latubula wuna Alla zee jarba chiku Atikin kumai Ya jarba chiku Atikin rayuamu Atikin لا فيهم يا جرب تيم أتكين يا أم كومي ألا جرب تيم أما مروكش يا كرب أمنا سبحانه وتعالى شيء شيء وبنجي جل وعلا إن كرب نوكوكوا كوا حتى مترو يروكا إن ألا نكرب دمشي رحيمني شيء مجن كيني كوا يروكا Allah ya karwa masa. Sawran nganji lahira wana bunida ba. Sisa muna rukong ubangi jisbuhana huwa ta'ala. Yende ya chichi al-umma. Da banda ba Allah ka chichi mu. Chichi wana zaka ya muna shini. Allah jalla wala ya ba mulafia. Sa ilina ubangi jia huwari mu. Yeti atiu Allah wa atiu Rasul. Wa uli al-amuri minkum. Kubi Allah. Kubi manzong Allah. Kubi shukaban nai. Yo, muzo muna rukonga ubangizi, mumbi shuga bana. Abenzo kuhore mu dishi, mui muna rukonga sabo da wanang horo, daka hore mu kabi Allah kemo na rahama. What is you? Allah kene Allah, Allah kene Allah. Kama ndo maalumu soka che, kene ya kemo na wanga. Banda Allah ba mui, lami yelet, wa lami yulet. Ba mui. Se Allah kalai akan hakana muna rukong Allah Suwa inga masumaga ni shuga banamu Allah wada musu hanya Menagarta wanda ki zi kemu zua ga zira Upangi ji Allah zira damu Upangi ilina wa enda muke da su anang Da su ke da basu da karfi Allah upangi ji ke musu dalili Muru ka ba ki lea Allah muna dalili Musamu arziki, mukula da kamu, mukula da ayamu, mukula da adinamu. Saha ili nangkuma, dukang al-umma ba kitaya, da muke tari, muhada kai. Imba hadin kai, ba suyaya, ba imani. Chisa, ka soma dan wanka, abinda kiche soma kanka, toka ke kwansa musira kuruka ba kitaya. Chisa, shuga banka sa, da mabiyanshi, da malan, da sauran limamai mu hadunan ne saboda mu gwada mu ba mu yi komai sai da ikon Allah abin da kama muke nan nan shi yasa muna rokon Allah ya kara musu kwazo Allah ya taimake su Allah ya sa su fi inda suke nan mu kuma Allah jalla wa ala ya sa mu biye musu sai na murka mu tsira baki daya Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت ورحمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين الله كرّقوم آمين سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بارك الله فيكم. Thank you very much, ma'am.
Uh, we have the last prayer, which is also the closing prayer. Prayer for the president, the vice president, the government, Ghana, and the world as a whole, by the national chief imam of Ghana, Dr. Sheikh Osman Nuhu Shabatu. Alhamdulillah <laughs> Wa'atina wa la tahrimna Allahumma zidina wa la tanqusna Wa rahamna wa la tuazibna Wa farriju humumana wa bakshu humumana Wa ansurna wa la tahazulna Wa akrimna wa la tuhinna Wa asurna wa la tablahana Wa aathirna wa la tuusir alayna Wa afazna wa la tulayyina Fa innaka ala kulli shayin qadir Ya aqtar al-qadirina ويا أسرع الحاسبين اللهم أنت أمرتنا بدعائك ووعدتنا بإجابتك وقد جعوناك كما أمرتنا فأجبنا كما وعدتنا وشرك المسال ونضربها للناس لا أعلم تفكرون والله الذي لا إله إلا هو آلم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم والله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المحمد العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله ما يشركون ولا والخالق البار والمصبر له السماء والحسنى يستبد لهما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يستفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب صلوا على النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم Thank you very much Chief Imam The Vice President our distinguished guest, the prayer session is over. But before you leave us, the Vice President will host you to a plated breakfast. I would ask the press to kindly leave us, and thank you very much for a very good job done. At the same time, the Vice President would also exchange pleasantries with you. Thank you very much, and stay.